Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! I first interviewed Emmanuel Macron in 2016 when he was a relatively unknown economic minister determined to swipe high-tech jobs from London. Since then, of course, he's torn up the political rulebook and romped to a historic victory in the French presidential elections. With Angela Merkel struggling in Germany, President Macron is widely seen as the leader in Europe. And this week, he came to talk defence and the migrant crisis with Theresa May at the Royal Military Academy in Sandhurst. I caught up with him there and I began by asking him whether he thought our Prime Minister could secure the deep and special partnership with the EU that she talks of. I do hope. I do hope. Because I think it will be good for the EU and for, for UK. She said a deep relationship, however, if the UK is, I imagine your view is, if the UK is not going to be a member of the customs union or the single market or accept the four freedoms, it can't be that deep. Look, it will be by definition less deep than today. Because the, the, the deepest re possible relation is being a member of uh, the European Union. So I think you have to be, you have to be lucid okay. and, and you have to be fair with people. As you decided to leave, you cannot be part of the single market. But in function of the na nature of the negotiation, you can have some deeper relations than some others. For instance, we have a deeper relation with Norway than the, way, the one we have with Canada. So it depends on the, on the outcome of this negotiation, but for sure, uh, except if you change your mind. But you, you will not be part of the single market uh, you will, as you will not be part of the European Union. And in concrete terms, let's talk about what that might mean. Now, you've said in the past you can have Canada or you can have Norway, but you can't have your own special deal. Is that really fair, given how long Britain has been part No, of it's the not a question to be fair or unfair. Uh, I take that as a reference, but for sure you will have your own solution. And, and my willingness and so that will be a bespoke special solution for Britain. Sure, but you will. I, I take these two references because uh, this this special way should be consistent with the preservation of the single market and our collective interests. And and you, you should understand that you cannot, by definition, have the full access to the single market if you don't tick the box. And and to get full access to the single mar market. You need contribution to the budget and you have to accept the, the freedoms the freedoms and the four pillars and you have to accept the jurisdiction. As soon as you decide not to join this, this preconditions, it's not a full access. So it's something perhaps between this full access and a trade agreement. But what is important is not to make people think or believe that it's possible to have... Uh, Your cake and eat it. Exactly. So when I talk to David Davis, our main Brexit negotiator, and I say, what does Britain really want out of this, David? He says, we want Canada plus, plus, plus. And by plus, 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 he means a deal on services because so much of the UK economy is based on services <coughs> in general and on the city in particular. Um, from what you've said today, I, gu I guess that you don't believe we can have any special deal involving the city. I mean... I you don't just speak about services, but you speak about financial services. Cooking a deal is the job of Michel Barnier. Uh, we have a very dedicated organization. I don't want to start a negotiation country by country. It will be ridiculous and the best way to dismantle the whole EU. Uh, I think what we have to do and what we will do is first to take the decision in March regarding the mandate we want to give to Michel Barnier to negotiate. Afterwards, you will have to negotiate with your negotiator. And, and they will decide, and it depends on proposals made by, by the UK. But for sure, full access for, for financial services to the single market is not feasible given the functioning of the single market. So by definition, it's not a full access. So in concrete terms, some form of passporting deal is off the table in these negotiations as far as you're concerned. I'm not the one to negotiate and I, am, I don't want to close no, doors, but it depends on what you're ready to, to put on the table in terms of precondition. If you respect the precondition to get access to single market, 
it's feasible, but there is no cherry picking in the single market. I mean, if, if I have to wrap up the, the full philosophy, no cherry picking in the single market. Because it's not feasible, because otherwise, that's the, dis that, that's the dismantling of the single market. And for me, it's one of the pillars of the European Union and something you loved in the past. And you, and you say that you're, you're, you're not negotiating, and that's absolutely right. But you were very much saying that one of the consequences of Brexit, you thought, was to reaffirm uh, Paris's centrality in the financial system. And France has made a very, very strong pitch to British financial institutions to come over to Paris. How is it going? Uh, in, uh, uh, in terms of European dialogue on financial services, but for sure. For sure, uh, we want to attract maximum activity. Why? Because this decision has an impact for a lot of players. So a lot of players will decide to be part of the EU and the Eurozone. Mm. And they have to choose between different countries. So there is a competition between different countries. Of course there is. I suppose the case for the city is that it has built up a very big part of the whole global financial system. And to unplug the city from the rest of the European financial structure is a big risk and a danger. Look, I think, first of all, I, I, it's absolutely not my willingness and I think not a reasonable perspective. Second, it's something to be taken into consideration by your negotiator and, and your own proposals. But my willingness is not to, to precisely to unplug, as you say, uh, uh, the British city. I think it doesn't make sense because it's part of the whole fin financing of our um, European Union. But for sure, if there is no change in terms of full access to the financial single market, it doesn't make sense for the other. So uh, I want to preserve what we created post-World War. And, 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 and what we created is this sophisticated organization called the European Union, which is for the very first time not an hegemony of one on the others, but a very concrete, democratic, economic and human construction. Why do you think the British voted to leave this sophisticated structure? Look, I'm not the one to judge or to comment uh, the decision of, uh, of your people, but my, my interpretation is that a lot of losers of this new globalization and this new system suddenly decided that it was no, no more for them. You always take a risk when you, when, you, when you have such a referendum, just yes or no in a very complicated context. If and France some... had had a referendum, it might have had the same result. Yeah, probably. Probably, uh, in, in, in a similar context, but our context mm -hmm. was, very, uh, very was very different, so I don't want, I don't want to, uh, to make any... <laughs> I mean, to take any bet, but, <laughs> but uh, I, I would have de definitely fight, fought very hard to win, um, but I think it's, it's a mistake when you just ask yes or no, when you don't ask people how to improve the situation and to explain how to improve it. As for the Brexit vote, my understanding is that middle classes and working classes, and especially uh, uh, the, uh, the oldest in your country, decided that the recent decades were not in their favor, and that the adjustments made by both EU and globalization, because for me it was a mix of both of them, was not in their favor. But surely it was about Europe as well, and, and, and the and structure second, of Europe. And second, I think one of the reasons was precisely an organization of our European Union, probably which gets too far in terms of um, freedom without cohesion. With, to, towards free markets without any rules and any convergence. And I have to say that your governments had some responsibilities in it. So I remember too ten, neoliberal perhaps. But ten years ago, ultra liberals on totally f and, and, and purely free market without re any regulation. Because uh, all your people saying the Hungarian workers or the Polish workers are much, much more favored than I am, it was exactly the debate we had in France 10 to 15 years ago against some directives that a lot of your governments pushed at that time saying, guys, you are not free market. I do believe in free market. I do believe in, 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 a, in a market economy, but we need regulation and convergence. Your vision seems to me to be deepening Europe. As a response to this, you, you want a single <coughs> financial minister over a whole thing, more European taxes, more done at the centre. Again, is that not a terrible risk? 
you know, how many European people look at this and say it's too far away already. It's, no, I uh, don't feel like engaged. Because in this. it's not just my view. I think what we need is, is first of all, to have a, a much more protective Europe. Europe is something which will protect you on digital, environment, migration, collective security, and a fair organization. But my, I would say, on the mid to long run view of Europe is the following. I, I do believe that we have a European Union. We will be unhappily 27. But Inevitably, definitely? I mean, it's on your own. It depends on you. I, I mean, I do respect this vote. I do regret this vote. And I would love to welcome you again. I, I, I can say... Your, but, vi your vision but of, my of, vision, a, to be clear, of a different Europe. So, my, my vision, on the very short run, be much more concrete. Less bureaucracy and more concrete and so to protect people and address their issues. Right. More sovereignty, more unity, more democracy. That's the recipe in order to succeed in Europe. If you lose your sovereignty and okay. you don't protect people, they don't believe in you. If you are not based on a democratic approach, they will not follow you. If you are not following this unity, I create consistency okay. uh, and convergence, they will leave. You said France is back. What did you mean by that? I mean that we are delivering reforms which seemed impossible for decades. This is, for me, the pillar because when you are not credible at home, okay. no chance to be credible outside. You talk about values, which must involve presumably freedom of the press and human rights and so forth. Did you raise those with the, the Chinese president when you were talking to him last I week? rose with all the leaders I met. In China, it's absolutely counterproductive to raise it during a press conference. Because, I mean, the political system, the regime, presidency is, I mean, not in a situation, in a current, I mean, in an environment. It's not going to help, you think? I, I do believe it's totally counterproductive. Okay. So what I did is I had a direct discussion. We have a track to discuss this issue. We've, we decided an organization and I provided, I would say, visibility and, and, and the, the ability for him to be sure that this is not a, a diplomacy in front of the camera. But let, I issued a very clear statement. Let me ask you, if I may, about that. A, yes, another leader, and wonder what you thought when you got up in the morning and read what President Trump, I can't say the word, had said about certain African countries, S-hole countries. He denies it, but he's, a lot of people say he used that word. And among the African countries who were outraged and very offended by that were many Francophone countries, many French-speaking countries in Africa. I wonder, did you share their outrage? For sure. So For sure, it's not a word you can use. And, 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 and if we want precisely to build peace, development in this country and a respectful relationship... You can't use those kind of words. But by definition, and I think a lot of our issues in both in the Middle East and in Africa is due to a lot of frustrations, due to a lot of humil past humiliations. Humiliation, yeah. And, and, and we have to understand that. And, and I do believe that we need, we have to respect all the countries. Mm. That's, are you, are you that's what we owe them, and, and, that's, and, 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 and that's much more efficient. So I have a very direct relationship with President Trump. We have a very good relationship. You sat down with him for dinner at the top of sure. the Eiffel Tower. I wonder what you make of him as a person, having come across him closely. Look, I, I think he's... A, he is not a classical politician. So he, first of all, he was elected by the American people. Mm -hmm. He is the president of the United States. And, and that's a great country and that's a great ally. So I want to work with him and I think we built a very strong relationship. We disagree on several topics. Sure. Uh, I call him very regularly. I am always extremely direct and frank. He is. Sometimes I manage to convince him. Sometimes, sometimes I fail. Do you, do you wake up in the morning thinking, what has he tweeted this night? No, uh, no, because I, I think we should not overplay the situation uh, and, 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 and the tweets. Because it's, it's, I, that's I, a I'm sort, sorry, I'm asking that, you... That's I'm, a sort of, 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 of mix between personal and political reaction. And I think it's not feasible when you're president of, of a republic like the US Republic, but to, like the French To respond one. too much like that. But the reason I'm asking, with a slight smile on my face, but it is very, very serious. We've got something like the North Korean situation. When Trump basically says, my nuclear button's bigger than your nuclear button, a lot of people in the world think this is just slightly unhinged and very dangerous. Yes, but the best answer you can provide to that 
is what? Just to say, we have to work very closely and seriously to force North Korea to come back to the table of negotiations. Mm. We have to follow the UN sanctions and implement them. And, and the, critical, the critical country in order to deliver is China. Absolutely. And that's, that's what we discussed with President Xi. And so talking about bringing countries back. It's just back, calm down everybody. Do you think that there is any chance at all of persuading the Americans to come back to the table on the Paris Climate Change Agreement? Uh, first of all, I, I, I don't think there is any option to come back to the table of negotiations to the Paris Agreement. I've always been very clear. It's negotiated and signed. It's just deciding to sign what is, what is done. Why? Because to we sign have, it then? But, I mean, we can. negotiated. Mm. 100 and more than 180 countries signed and are being ratifying. Mm. Uh, come on, we will not renegotiate for one people. So, I do believe that's a big mistake. Fine. I told him, but there is no new negotiation. You okay. join or you don't join. China decided to, to remain in the loop and, and we will deliver. I think we, we have to accelerate. But what I see is that private sector and okay. states in the US are following this line. They are trying to comply with the agreement. So we will do it. Very final question. You said you were going to be a Jupiter-like president. What did you mean by that? I, I think I, I never used like that this expression. When you preside, you have to preside. It's different from governing. And you have to be, to avoid permanent comments, to avoid a sort of day-to-day -day presence without strong decisions. You have to have a bit of elan, a bit of gloire. I, I, I would not say that exactly <laughs> uh, following that. You need efficiency authority, humanity. So that's why the this, this third pillar is not compatible with the Jupiter uh, <laughs> or, uh, uh, <laughs> or anything of this, okay. uh, of this kind. But, but what's important to me and the message I want to say is that our credibility is to explain what we want to do, to deliver, to change the country, to prepare the country to the new century. That's what we are doing in France because that's a precondition to succeed in Europe. And our role in this world is to help everywhere to build peace. That's it. That's my job. President Macron, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very thank much. You.